Welcome, welcome, welcome to a very special episode of Hash Discusses. We got Psycho Rich in the cut. He is an amazing artist. He, I, I've, he's always featured in these crazy songs that um have like a bunch of amazing underground artists in them, like all the ones with Half Dead Shogun and and Sly. He's he's an amazing artist, and I've always been listening to him. Me and my homie Unlucky Beats. We we always talk about his shit, and um. Yeah, tell us about that new project you got in the works and when it's coming. Yeah, out. yeah. So uh, we got a uh, my third tape's gonna be dropping on Thursday. It's uh, Tales from the Blunt. Um, Jay Dunnone, you know, he's my producer. Um, you know, uh, we got ten tracks on there. Uh, we got an intro and an outro, shout outs, and we got uh four or five hidden gems that nobody's heard yet. Uh, we got a song called Revenge. Uh, we got a song called um, Public Enemy Number One and Four Five. That's part two and three of the On the Run um, that we already have. We got a real hidden gem called Dreaming, man. Uh, about as real as it gets, man. It's another real song like Black Sheep was. Black Sheep's also going to be on that album. Uh, nice. That was real emotional. Yeah. I really liked the like the lyrics and stuff and i feel like a lot of people could resonate with that track if that makes sense oh yeah i'll talk about it a little bit so basically the black sheep uh it's you know my real life um i was adopted at birth um i never knew my real father and my real mother was mentally handicapped she couldn't take care of me and her parents were too old so i was put up for adoption and um, I was adopted at three days old. Um, didn't really have the best childhood, I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, when I was 10 years old, my father got throat cancer. And he was given six months to live unless he had, you know, he went under surgery. So he did chemotherapy and radiation. And, you know, he got out of the hospital and everything. But... He really wasn't the same guy, you know, he was built up with a lot of anger and he was built up with a lot of, you know, just hostility and animosity and he would take it out on me a lot, a lot of times. And I would tell my mom, you know, and she wouldn't believe me. Mm. She wouldn't believe me at all. And so it just, it got to the point where I went downhill and I got my first little bit of freedom when I was about 15, 16 years old. I got my first job and I got introduced to drugs and I just really went downhill from there. Um, I did it because it was like an escape to me. Um, I was always the black sheep of the family. Uh, I had three half brothers. They were all older than me. They were born in 74, 77, 78. I was born in 92. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. So my adopted mom, that was her kids from her first marriage. You know, they were half brothers. So um, anyway, I just, you know, when I got into drugs and I went downhill, um, before I knew it, I was 19 years old and I was in trouble with the law. I just lost my father to cancer, my adopted father, you know, um, and I just really fell downhill and I got caught with felony larceny i had three felony larceny charges and i went off to prison i did three years in prison from 2011 to 2014. <clears throat> so when i got out of prison in 2014 i was on parole i i was doing right you know i moved furniture for a living and uh just the overall of that i was always the black sheep in the family still to this day none of my family fucks with me no, no, no. That sounds like one of your realest songs, if that makes sense. Would you say it's your realest song? Yeah, yeah. I would probably say that's probably one of my realest songs, that one. And, of course, you know, uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, that would probably be the realest song. Uh, Dreaming's another one that's going to be on the next album that's, you know, I'd say very real uh, when it comes to what i've always dreamed about in life compared to real life um yeah you know just everything in general just uh but dreaming has more to do with the world too you know dreaming how the world could be a better place you know uh, it's really deep 
But yeah, overall, Black Sheep is probably yeah. the realest song I've ever wrote. On like how, you know, the world and how it could be better. You're very vocal about like a lot of, like sort of political. I could say a little bit of political stuff that you, you'd speak out about. Uh, ha- like, do you plan on incorporating a lot of that in your music or do you kind of already do that? Yeah, I, I kind of mix up. Um, my thing is I kind of mix the Memphis hardcore in. Uh, been doing boom bap, so I kind of mix in the hardcore with real life and being on the streets. Kind of like how the old Memphis artists would do. You know, not only would they do hardcore, but they would talk about real life shit. Yeah. And that's what I try to incorporate in my music. You know, that, that old school, authentic. You know, that style, that 90s style, I'm very old school. I don't really relate to today's music that much. How did you discover all of that? Was it just growing up or? All right, so uh, yeah. basically um, what really drove me into the music and everything. So uh, I was in a relationship for two and a half years with my ex, and it didn't work out. So I've been single three, three and a half years now. I ain't really been trying. I've just been maintaining on my music. I really got serious with the music about a year ago. And Jada Unknown actually came across me. So how I started was I was doing uh, tracks off of free beats. You know, I was like just showing people my talent. And Jada Unknown came across me and wanted to do a track with me. And I had actually heard of Jada Unknown before because Jada Unknown was the original guy that posted the Triple Six Mafia tapes back in the day. He so wait, wait, guy. I have a question though about Jay real quick yeah. after you've, you know, after I ask this, finish the story, but is he the runner of that Sounds of the Underground uh, YouTube? Yes. Yeah. Oh man, that's yeah. fire, man. I'm always, yeah, I love that channel. Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, he actually used to have it listed under Jada Unknown, but then he switched it to Tales from the, or I mean, uh, Sounds of the Underground. But uh, that's what he does. You know, he likes that, you know, artists that are authentic, that are old school, that aren't really like, I guess you would say more like today's music, you know, like the pop, funk, kind of all that. More like old school, authentic wise, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, he came across me, and the first track I did was Depression. That's another one of the, you know, real tracks as far as me in general, because I I suffer from depression, and yeah. so we did, did that. Discover, how did he discover you? Like when? Uh, I'd say September of last year, September of 2020. Has it like um, been uphill since then? Really? Like I I just like oh, yeah. every every collaboration. Like, you know, Black Sheep, what we were just talking about, was with him. Yeah. So, like, yeah, and what's it like working with him? Is it in person, or is he, where is he from? Uh, so, I live in Nashville, Tennessee. He lives in Louisville, Kentucky. So, we live three hours apart from each other. But um, the way he came across me, you know, like I said, with the song and everything, uh, once I did the track with him, and what really made it good was we both suffer from depression. So once we did that track and we came together and everything, I've never met him in person. You know, I plan to meet him soon. But uh, once we did that track, we made an agreement that we would uh, go 50-50 on everything because I see it like this. To make it in the music industry, if you're just a rapper, you're not going to make it without a good producer. Yeah. You know, so... I linked up with him. I said, let's go 50-50, man. Let's just go 50-50 on everything. Let's start our own record label, man. You know, let's start our own shit. Level one. Yeah, level one records. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Bandcamp is thriving right now. Yeah, man. And, you know, it was just, he was cool with it, you know. And we both agree, man. We're probably, you know, He's one of the realest cats I've ever met, and I'm one of the realest cats he's ever met. So we've made the three tapes so far, the EP, the the Mind of the Psycho. We did the Kill Out of 615, and this one coming up, Tales from the Blunt. So we've done three tapes together. Uh, we went 50-50 on the tapes. We go 50-50 on the profit. Uh, just everything we go 50-50 on, and 
that that's where the respect comes in. That's where the, you know, the loyalty comes in. I've been, you know, cats have been like, man, you're talented. You know, you should sound with schema posse or like some of these other main groups or whatever. And I was like, no, I said, Jada unknown found me when nobody else really gave me a fucking chance. Yeah. I said, and that's real shit. I'm going to stick with him. I'm loyal. You know, I don't, you know, that's the kind of man I am. You know, if somebody's going to see talent in me and want to make me somebody, you know, I'm not going to fuck that person over. You know, and we've been real. Uh, let's see, it's June now. So we've been together about eight, nine months now. Yeah. Eight, nine months, made three tapes. You know, our, uh, our future plans, I'm hoping – it's just really hard right now. It's really hard. I, you know, with all the shit that I've been going through the last year, one day I want to be able to go out and I want to be able to tour, you know, I want to be able to start doing stuff, you know, and it, it's yeah. really hard when you're kind of unknown, you know, where I came from. I came from no followers, dude. I came from no followers like nine months ago and I grind and I grind every day. I try, you know, I try my best to, promote myself i've never paid for promotion i've never paid for anything i just i grind and in a in a eight nine months time you know i've gained about seven thousand followers so the plan is when i get to the point where i can make enough money i can sell all the tapes that i have and everything on bank on our level one band camp page you know, and the money starts going really good, you know, we'll be able to start touring and start doing more stuff. It's just right now. Yeah. Mainly getting that fan base, you know. I feel like if you were to tour, it would it would it would it should have the aesthetic of I don't know if you've seen the Hellboy tour with Lil Peep, it should have that aesthetic. I feel like it would yeah. be beautiful. You could headline something, man. I could definitely see you doing a show with like I don't know, you probably I would love to see you perform with like um, Half Dead Shogun or Sly or those people. I feel yeah. like you guys, you guys automatically, you guys already have that good chemistry on the tracks. You know what I mean? Like uh, the Homicidal Maniacs one was was fantastic. How did that come together? That was beautiful. Oh, so uh, so how that came together? Actually, believe it or not, me and Jay came up with a plan. We were like, you know, to be real Memphis, you got to think back in the day, Triple Six Mafia, the Ten Wanted Men the Gimmison family they always did posse tracks yeah they also they always did posse tracks they did like at least four or five guys up to eight nine ten guys on a on a track so i was like we can be authentic with that jay i say you can make an authentic ass beat and it, he did he made a fucking all i love i love his fucking work man he's fucking nasty and you know he made the track we were like, you know, we're going to get a couple people that we really fuck with to get on the track. So we got Sly and we got Six Foot Slim and we got Half Dead. Yeah. You know, and we got them all on the track together and, you know, it just, it, it went good, you know, because their flows and then my authentic flow in with it, it just, it made it golden. And I was like, man, we got to do more of that, you know, because and that's the what people love. And then the next one after we got the thirty eight joint with yeah, uh, man. Isaac, man, that was nuts. Um, I Isaac is he? He's he, he does he just produce or does he rap on? Did he rap on that? Or am I? Uh, I know he's with Criminalistic Records. He runs Criminalistic Records. Um, this is actually the first time I work with Isaac. Um, so he I've worked with that. De- yeah, he did produce the track. Um. But really, who got me on this track was Dex God. Um, Dex God, you know, is a real dude, man. You know, he came to me and he was like, you know, you've gotten to the point where you're one of the first guys I want to collab with on a track, you know. And that made me feel good. I was like, wow, you know, coming from Dex God, I was like, that was that was fucking awesome, you know. Yeah. Uh, and you know he you know he keeps it real with me and we've done actually three tracks together so far me and dex guy we did the smoking bud we did uh the homicidal maniacs and 38 special when'd you come across um when'd you come across half dead shogun because he's one of my favorite artists 
you know, like him and uh, Fon Carlos Records, man. It's a yeah. good little unit they got, if that makes sense. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, I came across Half Dead, I'd say, I'd say at least three or four months ago. Um, I came across him, and he really liked my style. And, you know, he was willing to work with me. And I was like, wow, you know. Cause I, I, he's got a really good ass flow too. And, you know, uh, he lives in Utah and it was just, it's really cool to like bond with guys like Shogun and Sly and Dex God and Slim and just, you know, all these guys, you know, that, that are really talented and that's what we're looking for in the underground. We're looking for cats who are really fucking good, you know, that want to help keep that old classic Memphis sound alive. No. Yeah, because, like, I think it's... How do I say this? If all the new shit comes from that, it's starting to stray away from it, if that makes sense. The new shit, I'm talking about, like, mainstream trap shit, it's, yeah. it's like, straying away from the roots of what it should sound like, in my opinion, because of my preferences. And you yeah. guys are making new shit the way it should sound like yeah in my opinion um to are you a fan of at least some of the um mainstream people that do it a little bit authentic i'm talking like ramirez or suicide boys or, or any of them or are you a fan of them i'm a you know i'm one of the bluntest guys you over me so i'm gonna keep it real with you i do like ramirez i do like ramirez and shit um only thing i i'm gonna be real with you the only thing i really don't respect about the suicide boys is i've never really heard them really come up with original samples that's true Mask they're always the clock. i'm gonna be real man they're always taken away from old classic memphis cats and you know i've heard project pad i've heard tommy wright i've heard play a fly i've heard you know i'm putting them on blast i know i am i don't give a fuck but you know uh I've heard them listen to, you know, using all these damn samples, and I'm just like, man, you know, all these people really fucking with these cats, but they're they're not really coming with originality. You know, uh, of course, you know, as far as mainstream, I fuck with cats like Kendrick Lamar and Eminem and shit, real motherfuckers that's keeping it real, J. Cole, you know, shit like that, man. But as far as, like, some of this new shit, man, I just, ugh, I can't. You know, I don't my really told me that he tried listening to the Polo G album and he was like, Jesus Christ, no, like, <laughs> no, man. I like, you know, a lot of the mainstream people that end up sounding good, they're either people that have been respected like for a while in terms of underground shit, or like they're they're really only like do shit um in a unit if that makes sense. Like Young Lee yeah. is on a whole different level and he's all because he, he makes shit with his childhood friends. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's like the same philosophy with you making shit with people like, uh, you know, Jay and stuff like that. But what other um, underground groups do you enjoy? Like people like uh, oh, Doom shit. Shop or yeah, House, man. I, man. Yeah, man. I listen to like a lot of, uh, let me see, uh, really like digging deep and everything. Uh, I fuck with some of these cats out here that I've heard in the underground, like, you know, Doom Shop, some of their shit, some of the artists are good. Um, You know, like, as far as underground, uh, man, uh, just trying to think of, you know, certain people. Like, me, mostly, I ain't gonna lie to you, I listen to a lot of old school shit. <laughs> I'm yeah. stuck in the fucking 90s, dude, I ain't gonna lie to you. Uh, but some cats out here, you know, I'm just having a you know, brain fart, but yeah, most motherfuckers out here, you know, that are in the underground are pretty damn good, you know, hidden talent, um, just waiting to be unveiled, you know, a lot of cats have come to me and talked about collabing and everything, or getting my opinion on some of the stuff, I had to tell one guy, I said, your shit's good, I can't remember who it was, but I told him, your shit's really good, you just gotta come on the deliverance a little bit more. I feel like if you can come with the deliverance a little bit more, you're you're gonna make it to that next level. You yeah, know, always somebody... angry on your shit on a majority of the time. You're always like, <laughs> well, I mean, I'm an angry person. I'm not gonna lie to you. you know, oh, your uh... Instagram rants are quality, quality entertainment. 
Like I'm. Just I don't sugarcoat you. shit. Yeah. You really don't. Like I don't like the whole scenario with the uh, the officers of Tennessee. Yikes. <laughs> Yeah, I'm on fucking probation now over a goddamn joint. You want to know the funny thing in the county that I live in, in Davidson, they do criminalize weed. But I got pulled over in the county I work in, which is right next to Davidson in Sumner County. And they gave me a year fucking probation for a joint, which this is killing me because I suffer from depression and anxiety and fucking PTSD. I've been through a lot of fucking shit in my life, dude. And I was detoxing like a motherfucker last week when I ran it. So uh, I was just being real, man. So what happened with that whole situation was the motherfucking cop pulled me over. I was going a little fast, I admit it. But I, he smelled the marijuana in my cigarette pack. He smelled the joint. He was like, you know, you got any, why does it smell like marijuana? And I kept it real with the motherfucker, right? And this was last... Uh, November. So I kept it real with him and I had two court dates, one in January, one in March. The January one got postponed because the officer was out due to COVID. Now I went back in March and the courts were closed due to COVID. So they rescheduled my court date for June 1st, which I went on June 1st. Okay. The cop called called my fucking phone the cop called my fucking phone because i i called the cop and uh or trying to get a hold of the cop to let him know hey i've been going to court you know the motherfucker originally said he was going to help me out you know since i was honest with him this is my first offense i had missed two court date well i went to two court dates but they were postponed you know so this motherfucker calls my phone and says you know i'm sorry for the inconvenience you know i know you've been to two court dates you've been honest with me you know you haven't tried to run away from anything so i'm gonna be real with you and of course you know i don't i don't trust cops so but i had a little bit of the little bit of fucking leaping faith i had for a motherfucking cop and i went to court on June 1st, and the fucking cop didn't show up. He never called me back. He drive fucked me. All right, so I go in. So I go into the courtroom, and I'm sitting there. They call my, you know, they call my name up, Richard Willis. You know, I get up. I go up to, over to the stand or whatever, and the judge, you know, sitting there telling me, you know, telling my charges and everything. And he asked me, you know, do I have insurance? I said, yes, I got insurance after the fucking, cause I had, I was out for like three or four months from furlough and everything. Cause my company furloughed for a while and I didn't have a job. So I was fucking struggling and I came back to work. I'm making 1350 now, but at that time I was only making 10 fucking dollars an hour driving 40 fucking miles a day, 200 miles a week. I was fucking struggling, dude. And I didn't have insurance at the time. So I told the, I tried to fucking tell the judge, you know, he wouldn't let me fucking talk. He was a little fucking bitch is what he was. <laughs> Fuck that motherfucker, man. Fucking bitch ass motherfucker. So anyway, I told him, hey, you know, I ain't got motherfucking insurance then, but I got it now. And he said, well, it doesn't matter. It had to be on 1121. You know, you ain't got the insurance then. You know, so he goes on and we keep ranting on and on and. You know, this motherfucker's like, well, I was like, I live in Davidson County. You know, they decriminalize in Davidson County. Is there a way I can just pay these fines off? He said, well, in Davidson County, they slap you on the wrist. But here in Sumner County, we do things different. So I was just like, God damn, man. And then, and then like, this motherfucking bitch-ass judge started talking about somebody else. I'm just standing there like, what the fuck, man? Like, I just look over at the bailiff, and I, I was quiet. I like, this is what I did. I was quiet. I just looked over. I was like, am I good to sit down, sir? And he said, you need to listen to what he's saying. It's like, God damn, I'm in fucking redneck, goddamn racist town, USA up in this motherfucker, man. It sounds like, like you like damn. the music. It sounds like you like the music of the South, but you don't like the authority of the South, if that makes no, sense. I no, <laughs> I don't. As soon as I get off paper, man, if the fucking Moore Act don't pass and they don't federally decriminalize this shit, 
because the governor here is a fucking bitch. Bill Lee, he's a fucking faggot. You know, he's he opposes fucking weed. He's a piece of shit. Fuck that motherfucker. Stuck, I hope he dies stuck 50 years ago. <laughs> yeah, bitch ass motherfucker. So anyway, <laughs> he's stuck in his own way. So anyway, they, you know, everything's illegal here. So if they federally legalize it, I'll be straight. But if I get off paper and it still ain't federally legal, I'm fucking out of here, dude. I ain't fucking leaving Tennessee. This state is nothing but a bunch of fucking Bible Belt Christian bitches, man. You might as well move to Arizona. I mean, I feel like that's a solid uh, alternative or Cali. But I feel like Cali, it's like there's already hella people there. I feel like Arizona is a yeah peaceful, if that makes sense. You don't, you don't oh, know. hell yeah. Hell yeah, and man. And it's legal uh, there, by the way. My homies. They, actu- yeah. they actually just... Uh, legalized it in uh the state of virginia which actually is right next to tennessee to the northeast so uh, you know i didn't want to go up to colorado or goddamn fucking you know that this I, I don't like the cold dude i don't like freezing my ass off i don't like fucking 15 degrees in the winter i'm going outside like god damn it you know i don't like that shit so uh, when they legalized it in Virginia, I was like, man, you know, if they don't fucking federally legalize it here soon, I'm just going to go to fucking Virginia. Oh, Virginia dude. is like, legal there. Yeah, they are. Uh, oh, it's effective July 1st. Effective July 1st. They're uh, legalizing pot. I was like, holy shit, dude. And I was like, that's close. Sounds like the wave. Sounds like the move. Um, But um, yeah, I was talking about, I don't know. I might have heard this on somebody else's podcast, but apparently after the probation in the 20s, the same people that were used to combat, you know, alcohol in the 20s, they spread that same unit to fight um, marijuana and stuff like that. So because before the probation, like marijuana and cannabis was used in like newspapers and shit and hemp like yeah. that. And it's crazy that like people still give a shit about something that's been on the planet longer than like humans almost probably i might be right you get what i'm saying yeah yeah i feel you dude and like i see it like this man i don't understand what the big fucking deal is about pot i got off parole in 2014 like i told you earlier right and i've stayed the fuck out of trouble ever since then i go to work i come home i bust my ass I make an honest living. You know, I suffer from depression and anxiety and PTSD, like I told you. I Sometimes I'm just really fucking stressed the fuck out, man. Plus, I was in a bad car accident. I got a metal rod in my right leg, and I'm missing six teeth. You know, I'm missing my six front teeth due to that accident. I've never really had really, really good money to get them fixed, so that's why it's harder for me to rap. Yeah. You know, and through all that shit, man, I just don't understand what is the big deal. Nobody has ever overdosed off of weed unless it's fucking laced with fentanyl or something, dude. Yeah. I, I smoke weed. I smoked weed every fucking day for six years. I swear to God, if they fucking violate me when I go to see the PO on Wednesday, I'm going to fucking burn this state a new fucking asshole. <laughs> That's how I, I I'm done with this fucking state, dude. Yeah. So so real talk, man. It's like I'm just to the point now where I'm just I'm just really fed up with this state. I have problems and they don't want to listen to my problems and they don't want to legalize the shit. So I, I I'm just to the point I'm done, man. For six years, dude. For six years, Mike, I stayed the fuck out of trouble. Yeah. I didn't do anything. I didn't think about fucking robbing people like I used to. I didn't think about going and stealing shit from people. I didn't think about fucking screwing people over. I did what the fuck I needed to do. I paid my fucking bills. I paid my fucking taxes. What's the goddamn problem? Sounds like sounds like a big disappointment, but um on another person from, you know, your area, Slim Gorilla, he's in uh I think he's in Memphis or some shit. He's in the ten- Tennessee area. Are you a fan of his music? Yeah, I've listened to some of his music and everything. Um, I kind of, you know, I'm digging it. I'm digging it. Uh, there, there's some cats here in, in Tennessee, man. Uh, Sly's actually originally from Tennessee, too. And, uh, you know, some cats here keep it real. Uh, 
you know, of course, uh, you had the Devilish Trio that was from here in Nashville. I, I fuck with their music. Um, you know, Baker Baker left the group, and it's now just Ten Gauge and Hydra. You know, but they do their own thing. You know, and they fuck with their own people. I've never associated with them. I've never met them. But I I've heard always Baker scam some people for features. I could be bullshitting right now. I could be talking yeah. out of my ass. But have you heard about know. that? I've not actually heard about that, brother. I don't really know. I hope that's not true, man. Right? That's yeah, I up. love his shit. Like, and he did a song with Solze. Solze yeah. keeps it real. Solze keeps it real. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sucking soul. Yeah. Hell yeah. Right, have, did you listen to that new joint? Uh, he dropped a project, and oh my god, I just love the title. I did a whole like video and article about it. It's called the slow burn. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard that shit. <laughs> Dude, that's, Hell yeah. Oh man, that's been that's fucking dope. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, I love his shit, but um, the old empty vessel stuff. I feel yeah. like the mix. You know, you know when like I love his old 2018 shit. Uh, how long do you listen to Soul a lot, or is it just every now and then? Yeah, every now and then. Yeah. Every yeah. now and then. Mostly, I ain't gonna lie to you, dude. Most of the time, I'll listen to like the old school 90s shit. Well, what's because... on your playlist? Like, go go into the specifics of. The oh, okay. Shit. Uh, shit. If we're really going back old school Memphis, I say like old school uh triple six uh mafia, old school like Tommy Wright, um play a fly, skinny pimp, you know shit like that. Uh, I'll even fuck with like East Coast rap, you know like Wu Tang Clan, uh, Big L, fucking, you know shit like that. Uh, West Coast. You know, I always fuck with like Tupac and fucking uh, let me see, Snoop Dogg, motherfucking uh, Brother Lynch. Mm. You know, like old school shit like that, man. You know, the reason why I listen to it is not only is it fucking good, but you know, it's not no bullshit. But it gives me ideas on how to be authentic. For sure, I'm not gonna like you know rob samples like some people do that we previously talked about, but you know I. You know, I get ideas. I get ideas like I listen to the flows. I listen to like the way they do shit. And it kind of helps me kind of like, you know, keep that shit alive. You know what I'm saying? It like helps, you know, give me that them ideas. And I try to come up with original ideas. I don't want to kind of like talk about the same shit in every fucking song. I try to mix it up a little bit. But I write all my music. I write all my lyrics and everything. I don't, yeah. You know, I don't rob from anybody. The um, the like the Instagram videos, like those are um, those are like really well done. Do you write them down and then kind of rehearse it prior to filming it, or is it just on the spot? So what I do, as far as the music and goes. I don't, I don't really like free float. Sometimes I like write, you know, like words and shit down. But most of the time, I have to listen to the beat. I, I have to feel the beat, man. I have to feel the beat. I have to listen to the beat. I got to make sure that it's kind of like the same kind of pace, you know, maybe with a little break sample in the middle or whatever. But once I listen to the beat, I kind of get an idea. Um, you know, I'll listen to it. I'll get the feel of it. Like, whatever, like, just comes to my mind, I'll just write something down, and I'll, uh, you know, think of rhyming words that'll go with it and see if it all sounds legit and if it goes with it or not. Um, there's been some songs that I've gotten in the past where I'll write a little bit, but I just, I run out of an idea. You know, I'll run out of an idea, or maybe, like, the beat switches up, and it's like, you know, I just, I get a little, like, mind blocked, you know, and yeah, I feel you. sometimes I got to sit back and think about the shit. I got to, like, think about the shit for, like, a few weeks or a month or so, you know, maybe go back to it, like, listen to it again, see, you know, if something's come back to my head or not. Yeah. I got a whole, uh, I got a whole, like, uh, I got, like, a five-subject notebook, and I just write lyrics all in it and shit. And, That's dope. When's know, our whatever. track finished? Man, uh, I'm still, I'm still at that part. I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do for that, that next part. You know, I wrote that first part. I'm still trying to figure out what I can do in that part where the beat switches up. 
Yeah, I know what you mean. Where I put the equalizer over, and it just kind of yeah, muffles just, the top. I'm just, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how to how unsolved to do it, equation. I'm, is that what you mean? It's like an unsolved equation. Yeah, I still got the lyrics and everything. I haven't forgotten about it, but it's just one of them things where I'm just really like in deep thought. Yeah, I'm not pressing you because you got the they got the new project, bro, and I'm I'm gonna have the you know yeah. cop a cassette or something. I'll definitely oh hell yeah, I'm but definitely yeah, hyped man. to see all that. Uh, you know now, now Jay told me I have to be real. Jay told me once the tape drops on Thursday to kind of like really promote it, you know, not really do any new collabs at the time. You know, so once that gets promoted and I get a chance to where I can really get back and do collabs and shit like that, which is like, you know, three, four weeks to a month, you know, and then I'll get back in the groove and everything. But I get better in time. You know, I just I keep I keep practicing. I practice every day and I try to my best to get better. Like I said, you know, with six missing teeth, it's hard. It's hard. It's like speech impediment wise. Sometimes I like do a recording and I rap and it's just like some of the words, like when I say pack, you know, it's, it sounded like Pat in 38 special. It's like, damn, man, yeah, it's yeah. like fucking speech fucks with me and it, it hurts me. If I had all my teeth, man, I feel like I could rap 10 times better. Yeah, well, we all, we, we, modern technology, bro. We'll be fine. We'll all find paradise. That's what I tell people. We'll all find. Oh yeah. We'll all find paradise. That's my little thing. If somebody's going through some shit, if that makes sense. But well, I ain't gonna lie to you. Everything that I've been through in the last year, like I said, the 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 officer and everything, and then on top of that, I was at work back in January, and uh, we had a ice. We had a bad ice storm. So I tried to get off of work early to go home. But unfortunately, they wouldn't let us go home early. And I'm not good in driving a nice. So I have to drive 21 miles home. So it's nighttime, and it's between 26 and 32 degrees when the fucking roads are the worst. And I'm going down 386, and I fucking spin out. I hit a patch of black ice. I didn't total my fucking car, but I can't open my fucking front door because... You know, there's no fucking door handle. Oh, you know, and yeah, I have to open up my back door. This is how ghetto I am. I have to open up my fucking back door and then pull the handle to the front door to open up the fucking front door. And then when I get out, when I when I get out of the car, I got to close the front door, open the back door, turn the key off and hit lock or unlock or the fucking front windows will go down. Sheesh. Sheesh. Like it's just so much shit. In the I didn't last know Tennessee. I didn't know Tennessee had fucking snowstorms, man. Yeah, man, it, it was really bad. This is back in fucking January and February. So here I am, driving with fucking tags. Cause last time I took my car to a fucking dealership, right? I I paid like two or three thousand dollars, and the service engine like came back on the fucking car within two weeks. Hmm. And I'm like, what the fuck did I pay for? What the fuck is this? You know, like, what the fuck is this? So, service engine light's still on my car. I took it to Marta a couple months ago. I mean, if it runs out, I'll take it to Marta again. I, you know, service engine light won't fucking go off. I can't pass Marta. I can't get, I got expired tags. They expired back in January. Damn. There's nothing I can do. Like... I, I don't know, car dude. like the scenario around car like i once tried like it's fucking people just say how do i say this they talk about money like it's fucking nothing about their cars and it's like dude that's a lot of money man just for a fucking you know changing the brake lines like dude but they brush it off uh, i'm just 800 it's like bro oh hell yeah you gotta know about it. you gotta know that not every, it's a lot of fucking money for you know us ordinary <sighs> You know what I'm saying? Like, people, um, it, there's too much money involved with cars, is what I'm saying. Do you agree? Yeah. And it's just rough, man. You know, I love the people I work with. And, you know, like I said, I'm making thirteen fifty an hour. I quit smoking, you know, for the time being, so I can save up a little money, I guess. And I'm just going to keep grinding on the music and keep doing what the fuck I got to do and just I'm go saying, from bro, there. You get dude. a show set up, bro. People are going to show up. 
I'll be slim. I don't know how far Ohio is from me. That's probably about like six hours, probably. But yeah. Slim's got a show in August, man. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you could set that up. But I don't know. I don't know what your schedule is like. But I would, yeah. love, I would go. I would go to a Psycho Rich show. I would record that. I Hell record yeah, man. That. But Hell man. yeah, dude. Yeah, man. But um, what Fuck else yeah. you want to talk about before we wrap this up? Oh shit, man. Uh. Let's see, man. Like I said, we we talked about the the release of the tape on Thursday. Uh, we do have future plans going, but we wanted to be a surprise, you know, it's, uh, to be announced. You know, um, just the situations that I've been through. You know, like I said, I've been through a lot of shit in the last year, and sometimes I say shit that I don't mean, you know, and I'm real. You know, I'm very fucking blunt, dude. I I don't. We need that energy up. in this age, man. Yeah, man. Honestly, you know, there. Honestly, the is thing respect. is, in the music industry, and I'm not gonna lie to you, in the fucking men music industry, there's just not enough real motherfuckers anymore. Yeah, everybody like most it. of the real motherfuckers got shot or killed or died. That's facts. That's facts. You know, um, but on, I gotta, I would say this though, honesty is respect. Yeah, a lot of people feel like it's not. You know what I'm saying? You gotta, you gotta, you can't, you can't be honest, and you gotta, you gotta say fake shit to be, and that's how you be respectful. It's like, dude, no, bro, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, that's the two things that I, I told myself I would never do, man. Number one, I will never sell out. I'm never going mainstream. I'm gonna stay in the underground. I want to be an underground legend. Um, yeah, you know, I don't, I don't like much mainstream music i think most of it's crap honestly i think you know especially like and i'm gonna describe that real quick like for example okay somebody that struggled in life like me you know and a lot of these cats out on the street you know if you see a video with a bunch of black women shaking their ass with motherfuckers like throwing hundred dollar bills like yeah yeah motherfucker yeah you know, and all that, like, rapping about some dumb shit. And and that shit gets, like, a million views, right? Like, in no time. But, yeah, you got motherfuckers like me and Sly and Dex God yeah, and, yeah. like, all these cats that fucking actually got talent in the music industry. We got talent, dude. We fucking, you know, we're authentic and we actually talk about hardcore. Plus, we talk about real life shit. Yet, yeah, it's, like, it's hard to get noticed these days. Back in the 90s, I feel like we would have done a lot better. And also, man, like, I, I like to see, like, Adam22, he showed a lot of love to, like, earlier elements of this scene. But he won't show that same love to this sound again because we're not in the new popping thing. Because he just did a new video looking through new SoundCloud rap. And it was just a bunch of people that sound like Annalie Choppa and a lot of, like, uh you know, young boy in the drill music. It's just, it's disappointing. Yeah. I don't that, like that auto tune bullshit, man. What the fuck is that? Like, ugh. I think it works. Um, if you make some new sounding type of stuff, if you use new sounding synths, but yeah. if it's just pop sounding stuff, it gets a bit annoying. If that makes sense, if it's yeah. a generic flow, but if you're making some spacey ass shit, that's hella experimental. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Like young lean, crazy yeah. shit, hella oh, emotional hell yeah. shit. But it's overdone, if that makes sense. Yeah, I feel you on that shit, brother. Yeah. But other than that, man, you know, like, before we go, I just want to, you know, just, you know, thank, you know, whatever fans of mine might listen to this. You know, I want to thank you for letting me come on here, you know, and talk, you know. And I also want to just say I'm going to keep grinding. I'm going to keep working my ass off. If I do go away in a couple of days, best believe when I get the fuck out, I don't think they'll violate me first time, but I'm just saying the worst scenario when I get out, it's on and popping. I'm not, I'm going to keep fucking grinding. One day I'm going to make it out the fucking struggle. I'm almost 30 years old. I'm fucking tired, man. Plain and simple. Oh yeah, man. Thanks for coming. And yeah, uh, man. like, comment, subscribe. Links in the description to his music. I'll definitely link to his band camp so you can grab that new tape. And uh, goodbye.